I do want to come back to this battle between techno pessimism and techno optimism because you certainly aren't making the case that technology always forces our ethics to evolve in positive ways. So, I mean, I think back to uh, Eli Whitney and the cotton chip that, uh, that slavery was actually about to become economically un unfeasible until Eli Whitney created the cotton gin and then suddenly it became, um, became economically valuable to have slaves again. And then we go on to the Civil War with the Gatling gun and this tremendous evolution of, of military technologies. I get particularly concerned about lethal autonomous weapons and uh, whether the their adoption could actually lead to that accident that, uh, that sets us back in spite of my techno optimism. So how optimistic are you? I mean, are there technologies that you are particularly concerned about and that you are willing to reject for ethical considerations? So, if I left the impression that I think every technology always leads to a better outcome and that there aren't wildly unethical ways to use new technologies, uh, I'm, that is not the impression I want to leave and that's not what I believe. Um, I think technology can be misused in incredibly dangerous ways. And I think if we don't understand how quickly technology can change our notions of right and wrong, then we're in danger of misusing technology in a fundamental way. And, and one way is the autonomous weapons debate. So when you think of Asimov's basic rules and you think about one of the three fundamental rules being robots should not hurt people, you're violating one of Asimov's rules by making these weapons more and more autonomous. And we do that at our peril. That, I think, is an incredibly dangerous thing to be playing with. I think we're underestimating the danger of nuclear weapons. I think we've gotten crazy used to that during a time when proliferation seems more and more likely. And it is certain that one single nuclear weapon can truly ruin your entire day. So as you're thinking of that structure, I think we're paying way too little attention to proliferation, to the risks of nuclear war, and to really focusing on a question, which is, what will be seen as truly wrong in a century that we were doing? And the notion that we would tolerate that single individuals in this world have a decision and can make a decision to wipe out most of life on Earth using nuclear weapons, people are going to look at that in 100 years and say, what the hell were you thinking? Why did you tolerate that? Why was that okay? Why do you think it's okay for the president of a country or the prime minister of a country or the dictator of a country to have that kind of power and weaponry? And, and why weren't you using every breath of your day to try and stop that? hopefully before you have a major war that brings that question to the forefront. So I completely agree with you. These, these are, you know, let, let me get, let me step back for one second. Why did I write this book? I spend most of my time thinking about and working on building companies or writing stuff or studying stuff that has to do with engineering life forms, with building synthetic life forms, and with understanding the brain and what happens inside the brain and how we can alter the brain. And every time I gave a talk about this stuff, I was asked about ethics. And I sat back and thought, hey, this is something relatively simple. I'll come up with 10 principles. I'll have an answer to the questions I'm asked. Well, six years later, <laughs> this book gets published. And this book is crazy and complete because... It doesn't have an answer at the end of it. It doesn't say, if only you do X or Y, you will know right from wrong. This is a book that's intended to stimulate debate and to make debate safer on campus. Because so many people are running around thinking, I know exactly what's right. I know exactly what's wrong. 
And, and it makes it very difficult to talk about subjects. If you use one wrong phrase, if you have one wrong tweet, if you sit next to one wrong person at a dinner, you can be condemned for what you did 10 minutes ago, 10 days ago, 10 months ago, or 10 years ago. And, and that leaves very little space for mistakes. That leaves very little space for debate. That leaves very little space to talk about the stuff you just posed, which is there are a bunch of places where ethics gets really mushy and they get really complicated. And, and it's not, you know, this is right and this is wrong. It becomes 50 shades of gray. And, and that's why it's so important to pay attention to this stuff.